Hello, um, in this tutorial we're going to look at the capital market line uh, which allows us to predict with the return on a portfolio if we divide our money partially between a risk-free asset and the market portfolio. Uh, the market portfolio, as you remember, is defined as the portfolio of two assets that maximizes the sharp ratio. The sharp ratio being our measure of return divided by the risk that we need to undertake to get that return. So we want as much return as we can get per unit of risk. In the previous tutorial, we found a market portfolio of Coca-Cola and IBM that had an expected portfolio return of 17.81% and a standard deviation of 26%. We were also looking at a risk-free rate of 5%. So we're going to look at two different ways to manage a $5,000 investment. In the first scenario, we're going to take our $5,000 investment and we're going to divide it between the risk-free asset and the market portfolio. In the second scenario, we're going to borrow money at the risk-free rate in order to invest it in the portfolio. So these scenarios are going to look a little bit different. Let's walk you through scenario one first. So in scenario one, you've got $5,000. You're going to invest some amount in a risk-free asset, a bond, uh, probably a treasury bond or a CD, and you're going to invest some of it in the market. So let's say that we're going to invest $1,000 in the risk-free asset. That means we're going to invest the rest of it in the market portfolio. So let's calculate some percentages because that's what we need in order to use the CML. So we can say that $1,000 divided by $5,000 is 20%. So we're going to put 20% of our money in the risk-free return and we're going to put 80% of our money in the market, in that market portfolio. So our expected return is going to be equal to the return that that 20% invested in the risk-free rate can earn. So 20% of our money is going to earn 5%. And the remaining 80% of our money is going to earn an expected 17.81 percent. Let's format this so we can read it, which means that we have an expected portfolio return of 15.25 percent. And that makes sense at first glance, somewhere between the risk-free rate and the market return. Our portfolio standard deviation is going to be only based on what's in the market because the idea with the risk-free rate is that there's no risk, right? So there's no sigma, there's no variance. If we invest our money in a government bond and we hold it to maturity, we're going to get 5%. So our standard deviation is just going to be based on the 80% of our money that we have invested in an asset that has a standard deviation of 26.41%. So our standard deviation for our portfolio is going to be 21.13% less than the portfolio standard deviation of 26% with the market portfolio. So let's break this down and look at it in a slightly different fashion. What I want to look at first is the dollar amount of return that we're going to get on that $1,000 that we put in the risk-free rate. So if we take $1,000 and we invest it at 5%, we're going to earn $50 in return, right? We're just going to assume we're in one year and with simple interest, we're not even going to get technical here. And if we invest in the market, we're going to take $4,000 and we're expecting a return of 17% on what we put in the market. So we would expect on that $4,000 to earn $712 in, in return, that that would be our return. So that means that in total, we're going to have brought in, in interest, in our portfolio, $762.37. So if we take that and we say, what is $762.37 as a percentage of $5,000? We can see that it's 15.25%. And that is where these numbers, or that is where that 15.25% comes from the $50 we'd earn on the risk-free investment plus the $712.37 that we'd earn in the market. So let's take a look at a different scenario. 
let's say you've got $5,000 in the bank and you're trying to decide how to invest it. And let's say that you want to put as much of your money in the market as you can because you have quite a bit of tolerance for risk. So not only are you going to invest all the money that you can in the market, you're going to actually borrow money on which you're going to pay interest. We're going to say that you're going to pay the risk-free rate and you're going to take that money that you borrowed and invest that in the market too. So when we borrow, we can enter something as a negative amount. So the dollar amount that we have in the risk-free asset, let's borrow a thousand dollars. So we're going to borrow a thousand dollars. And that means that in the market, we're going to be able to take the $5,000 plus the $1,000 that we borrowed, and we're going to be able to put $6,000 in the market. What does this mean for percentages? Because it's percentages that we need to put in the CML. So the percent that we have in the risk-free asset is going to be a borrowed amount. It's going to be negative, right? So we've borrowed $1,000 of our $5,000. We've borrowed 20% of our money. We've borrowed a 20% amount of what we had to start with. And then we've taken that, added it to what we had, and invested 120% of what we have into the market. So we have 100% is our total there, but 20% is borrowed. So we've leveraged ourselves to invest more than we have. So to calculate our expected portfolio return, we use that same formula. We say it's going to be negative 20%, right? We're borrowing money. So we're going to have to pay. We're going to have to pay. We're going to have to pay 1%, right? 20% of one of 5%. And then to that, that we have to pay, we're going to have 120% of our money invested in this expected portfolio. So we're going to have an expected return equal to 20 some odd percent. I'm not going to bother to adjust the size of that cell because I suspect it's going to happen again when I do the standard deviation. So again, our risk is going to be only based on the portfolio. I'm sorry, only on what's in the market. So our risk is going to be 121% of the market standard deviation, otherwise known as 31.693%. Now I'll adjust this. So, you know, that may seem like a nonsense situation, right? I'm going to have an expected return greater than that of the market, and I'm going to have a standard deviation greater than that of my riskiest asset. But let's break it down into our costs and our returns to see how that actually works. So if we want to think about borrowing, we're going to be borrowing $1,000 at a 5% rate of interest, right? So that means we're going to have to pay $50 in order to get that $1,000 out. We're then going to take that $1,000 plus the $5,000 that we had, and we're going to take that and we're going to invest it in the market that has an expected return of 17.81%, meaning we're going to have a total dollar return expected, right, based on the historical mean of 1,068.56. So that means our total return is going to be that 1,068 that we're going to get minus the $50 it's going to cost to borrow. So we're going to have a $1,018.56 return. And if we take that as a percentage of the $5,000 that we had to invest, we have a return that's 20% of our investment. And that would be using leverage in order to increase the amount that you can invest in the market to generate a greater return. Um, not something I recommend, but it's theoretically an interesting um, idea to look at. I hope this helps you on your Chapter 11 homework. Uh, happy calculating!